Hey, all you Second Wind listeners out there. I just wanted to take a moment before the show to share with you our new sponsor. I've been working with bestradiotravel.com to bring the lowest hotel prices to my loyal listeners. Stay tuned during the upcoming show to hear more about how you can save 15 to 30 percent off your hotel rates. Now, let's start the show. Welcome to Second Wind with Joyce Buford, a program for and about women. Joyce Buford is a certified coach and motivational speaker who has a passion for helping women who need a second win. She is the author of the Amazon bestseller, Effortless Happiness, How to Find Your Voice and Finally Ask for What You Really Want. She studied directly with her mentor, Jack Canfield, and is a fully certified coach in his program. Also, she has served as an assistant in his training programs. Through her study with many prestigious coaches and mentors, she has created a powerful program that has positively impacted thousands of people. On today's program, Joyce and her guests will help you to get your second wind. Now here's your host, Joyce Buford. Welcome to Second Wind. Yes, this is Joyce Buford and I'm your host for Second Wind. This is a show about women connecting with women so that they can hear the stories and successes in maneuvering the changes that are involved with any transition in our lives. It's about the successes. Remember the successes they experience on the other side of the transition. And there are lots of successes. My guest today is Rhonda Nordyke. Now, Rhonda is the founder and CEO of the Women's Financial Wellness Center. Rhonda is also a professional speaker. While her platform is Women's Money Wellness, it is not just about money. Her topics include assertive communication, boundaries, leadership, and overcoming financial myths. Her dynamic and inspirational style leaves women with a sense of empowerment. Now, Rhonda teaches courses at a uh, technical, technical college in Wisconsin. Now, Rhonda, you know I just was having really a lot of time saying that name. Would you like to say the name of that college for us? <laughs> uh, I know, right? Um, yeah, it's yeah. Waukesha. Waukesha. <laughs> it's Waukesha uh-huh. Now, listeners, yeah. I don't know if you're familiar with Wisconsin, but they have a lot of Indian names up there. And so having been <laughs> raised in some areas close to Indian names, I, I, you know, I would just brutalize the names. So anyway, thank you for pitching in there, Rhonda. She yeah, has a welcome. bachelor's degree from Carroll University in what she saw, Wisconsin, which is where she also teaches She resides with her husband, Tim, and three daughters. Oh, my goodness. Poor Tim. He's got so much much going on. Oh, Rhonda, thank you so much for being here. It's just a treat to have you here because I think financial management, after a woman goes through divorce, much less that's not really a role that many of them, particularly of my generation, took on in the in the unity of marriage, or even from uh, starting as uh, professionals. So yeah. I really welcome you you talking about that today. So yeah, thank you so much. Now you did something that was really brave. In 2014, you were a financial, you were in the financial industry and you were an advisor. And then you changed careers, which I am. So I want to know how you made that decision, because that took a lot of courage to do that. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, thanks, Joyce, so much for having me. I am really looking forward to spending some time together here today with you and, and with your listeners. Oh, um, yeah. Thank you. So, you know, isn't it interesting how 
life takes us on a journey. And I had been in the financial industry for about 12 years. And I really had started to see patterns of, you know, very early on, I loved working with women. I started in the financial industry when I was 28 years old. And I didn't know a whole heck of a lot about money at that point. But what I did know was that I was open to learning and I really resonated with the women. And I had women that were decades older than me that were listening to what I had to say. And I really knew that I had a lot of responsibility on my shoulder to provide them with the best, you know, knowledge, information, and tools that I could possibly find. So 2013, 2014, I really started to take a look at, okay, where do I want my business to be five years from now? Yeah. And, you know, a lot of times I think that's a tough question because we know that if we answer it honestly, that may require us to change. Yes. Mm Mm-hmm. So I was sitting in my office, and I always say it's a really great office with not uh, the greatest view. I was overlooking the parking lot, having some really great thoughts. (laughs) (laughs) The clouds were pretty. (laughs) That's right. (laughs) And I remember thinking, okay, you know, if I continue down the same path, I will have more clients, more assets, essentially more revenue. But is that Mm -hmm. really what I want to be doing? And... The answer was no, and wow. because I knew that my vision was bigger than what I was currently doing. So I had mm-hmm. a client who came into my office, and she kind of threw a business card down. And I mean, it, you know, it's one of those where she kind of, you know, chucks it across the table like, you need to reach out to these people. And I'm like, who are these people? <laughs> and so, <laughs> well, who are these people? Yeah. And I look at the business card, and it was a business card for – um a company, an organization called, at the time, Think Global. And uh-huh. they had started their business overseas working with women entrepreneurs, helping them scale their businesses. Mm-hmm. And then they decided to bring it back to the United States because they were seeing, gosh, you know what? There's just as much of a need in, in the U.S. as there is in other parts of the country. Maybe these same principles would work. Mm-hmm. So they launched in Denver, and then their next um, their next stop was Wisconsin, and they'd gotten some corporate funding and had enough room for nine women, business owners, um, mm-hmm. to go through their program. And I met with them, and they said, okay, well, you're going to get one three-hour session a week for eight weeks with the CEO of Think Global, who, by the way – you know, has been the consultant for Zappos and Arizona State University and honestly one of the most brilliant business people that I have ever met. Oh, my gosh. That's awesome. And then they said, can you commit? Can you commit to eight hours a week for eight weeks with a group of other women entrepreneurs from Milwaukee? And Mm -hmm. I said, like, "Uh, yeah. Like, I mean, it was like literally this opportunity dropped from the sky. And it was exactly what I needed. Mm -hmm. I had the opportunity to work with women that had been in, you know, very large, multi-million dollar family organizations. There was one woman there that had just purchased um, the women's basketball team from Milwaukee. I'm like, okay, where have these women been hiding? (laughs) You know, like, it was awesome. You had a whole network of women there, new network of women. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. So long story short, you know, I spent eight weeks of an intensive with this amazing group, and it brought clarity. It was scary. Um, And ultimately, the conclusion was, Rhonda, you're not going to be able to build the type of business that you want and help the number of women that you want if you stay where you are. And so I had amazing support that helped me navigate through the um, process for that. And... Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it was, you know, it was good. So then I left and yeah, it was, it was, uh, it was really challenging because you get to the new place and you're like, okay, where are all the people? Mm-hmm. Um, but I knew that I was doing the right thing. Mm-hmm. And the first year we had over 300 women that came through our doors. We had attracted some really great media attention. Um, we'd been on, on the news about three times and it was, it was good. And mm-hmm. I had no regrets of leaving, and now here we are, you know, approaching 
our fifth, you know, year five. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's just been amazing. Uh, Amazing. So what, well, now your focus is not, it's just women in finances. However, you do tend to help the woman that's going through divorce to help her with her finances. So do you specialize in divorce or is your overall umbrella just wellness for the female in financial hand, handling of their yeah. finances? So I guess the best way to answer that is, um, Usually when I'm doing speaking, it's from a general, like, financial wellness and empowerment for women perspective. Yes. My one-on-one coaching is specialized for women that are going through divorce. Okay. And in what yeah. phase of divorce are they in? Are they in that planning? Do I want to? Do I not want to? In the actual process of the legal? Or are they after the the well, uh, legal work, the final divorce. Yeah, exactly. Um, it's interesting because I always say, well, it kind of depends on where I come in in the movie. <laughs> yes, right. Yeah. You know, are we uh, are we running the trailers, you know, promoting potentially that it's going to happen, or are yeah. they in the midst of the chaos or, other, you know, on yeah. the other side trying to make sense of all the pieces? Yeah. So honestly, it just kind of depends on when I get in contact with them. Um, we're starting to see a lot more now that are in the contemplation stage. And I think that yeah. is primarily because I, too, have a, a podcast called Divorce Conversations for Women. And I think women are checking it out when they're in that contemplation stage. Yeah, and, of course. You know, and then yeah. they're reaching out, right? Right. So we're, we're reaching a lot more women that haven't filed, which is really good because a lot of times what happens is, you know, they don't know where to start. They're overwhelmed. They maybe pick an attorney. They don't really know exactly what they're looking for in an attorney. They get down the path. Yeah. They've spent sometimes well into, you know, five figures on attorney be, you know, attorney fees. Yeah. And um, it's really challenging. So if we can get involved from the beginning, we can help basically project manage all the pieces. I mean, I'm helping connect them with the right resources, the right tools. Um, I'm coaching them through what questions to ask. I'm reviewing documents from a financial perspective. So oh, I was no. basically the advocate for them throughout the entire right. process. So the sooner I get involved, the smoother it goes. Yeah. <laughs> now, do you coach people all over the United States through this process that early? Yeah. Yeah. You do? I do. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah. you know, having gone through my own divorce, that's 20 years ago, I know how paralyzing that situation is. And, of course, the money is the biggest question that stops so many women from really getting out of a, a marriage that they need to leave. But they're yeah. so paralyzed, they cannot think of life without how will I work? I've never worked outside of the house. What am I going to do? And it it's really, um, yeah, it's a time of fear and doubt, really tough. So yeah. I know having you there to explain some of those decisions um, is just invaluable, <laughs> really. Yeah. You know? Yeah, thank yeah. you. I mean, it, it's, it's you know, it's one of those things where I guess it's, you know, somewhat like parenting, right? Like when you see how the story could end. Yeah. And it's like, okay, how much do I tell them? Mm-hmm. Because I don't mm-hmm. want to operate from the position of fear. And mm-hmm. yet I'm like, I, so I end up saying, okay, well, if you think that this is going to be amicable, mm-hmm. I hope that it is. Mm-hmm. But if it mm-hmm. isn't. Right. We need to make sure that we plan accordingly. And if you are, great. But, you know, we can't be um, keeping our head in the sand and not have a strategy. And, Mm -hmm. you know, right now, with all the clients I've worked with, there has not been one that it's like, oh, this is so much better than what I thought it was going to be, you know, (laughs) with this process. Like, (laughs) most of the time, it's, oh, my gosh, this is worse than I thought, right? All the time, it's worse. This is worse, and this person isn't who I thought I married, and oh my gosh, what would I do without you? Yeah. And so there's always this fine line between how much do you tell them? Like, this thing's really going to yeah. <laughs> be terrible. Well, you know, 
It, bless our hearts. We women are just the dearest people. You know, even when we are leaving a marriage, we still have these blinders on that say, yeah. oh, it's going to be fair. Even though they yep. may have lived in a marriage that was never fair, they will say, yep. oh, he'll be fair. And I don't you think that's where a lot of the surprises are, just getting to the reality? Yeah, absolutely. I, I mean... You hit it right on the head, Joyce. Like, you know, he said that I'm going to be well taken care of. He said that he wants the best for me. Yeah, okay, right? But right now, those are words. Like, let's see how that pans out here as we go through this process. And he starts to see the reality of what that would actually mean for his finances when he has to give her a significant portion of whatever on a monthly basis or a lump sum or whatever. It's, It's Different ball game. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, let you me know. tell you, you don't want to get a divorce in Texas. <laughs> there's so many there's so many rules and laws and oh mercy me. Uh, <laughs> but one of the things you have to spend time on, I'm sure, is helping your woman find a uh, feel comfortable with the finances, but also feel confident. How do you do that, Rhonda? Yeah, so it's a process. Um, Mm -hmm. A lot of times we will start with a budget, and I always say, you know, it's not sexy or glamorous, but it becomes a really solid foundation for us to be able to say, okay, we've got to get a snapshot of, you know, the household expenses and income, and, and then we can also then tweak it to say, hey, if you think that you're going to need to get an apartment or you want to purchase a home or whatever, that we can say, okay, well, here's the range that you're looking at when you go out into the marketplace, um, you know, that to stay within your budget. So yeah. I have also found that that becomes a really important piece down the road for, uh, which is kind of crazy because it makes no sense, but negotiating maintenance or alimony or support. Yeah. Because a lot of times it, the burden of proof is on the wife if she's receiving it to prove that she needs the money, which I think is just ridiculous, but um, Mm -hmm. it is what it is. And so the budgeting piece is certainly important. The other tool that I use that has been really powerful is Mm -hmm. um, it's called the moneyogram. And it's actually a tool by a woman who um, her name is Kathleen Burns Kingsbury. And she is a uh, financial writer, um, to help financial advisors. And I had read several of her books, had the opportunity to be on her podcast a couple of years ago, and she had developed this exercise. And basically what it is is you go through, you know, your history with money related to your family. So you put together a family tree, and then yeah. you <clears throat> ask a series of questions related to, you know, what were my grandparents' attitudes and beliefs about money? What were mine? What were my parents? And mm-hmm. we dive deeper, you know, to say, hey, what were – um, their professions, you know, and they might say, well, I didn't know, I don't know what their attitudes are. Well, okay. Is, mm-hmm. Were they generous? <clears throat> no. Okay. Well, mm-hmm. did they have debt? I mean, you know, if you can ask the questions to really help them dive down, yes. but what it starts to do is give you those patterns to say, oh my gosh, no wonder, like I've got my math, my moneyogram mm-hmm. and my, you know, soon to be ex-husband has his, no mm-hmm. wonder, you know? Mm-hmm. So, that has been a really helpful tool for creating awareness to say, hey, if you're going to change those attitudes and beliefs about money, you know, at this point it's going to start with you because we got to understand the past, but you have an opportunity to change, you know, your attitude about money as well as impact your kid's attitude about money um, mm-hmm. if you have children. So that becomes a really powerful tool. Um, right. You know, and then I think the other simple thing is terminology. So, um, you know, again, just being able to be familiar with some of the financial terminology. So when somebody says, you know, a stock, a bond, a 401k, whatever, you're like, okay, I may not be able to repeat the definition verbatim, but I know I've heard that somewhere before. Yeah. And that's all part right. of that building the confidence process. Yeah. 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 Well, I think so many times, 
particularly um, in settlements, um, for some women, they, you know, if they're married and are living comfortably, they're introduced into the investment world. And that's like, oh, my gosh, what are they talking about? I have no idea. Do they manage my money? Do they not manage my money? Uh, Those are big questions. Do I stay with this one or do I switch? Um, They're they're big questions. I mean, it's for the woman that goes through divorce or goes through death. Those are major Mm -hmm major questions and it's like being in a fog to know what to do so having a person like you an independent person to consult with has got to be valuable for them mm-hmm. yeah because it is and like you said you're right I mean it is the fo- a fog is a really great way to describe it because um, it's hard to see mm-hmm. you know beyond the fog Mm-hmm. And I always say, okay, let's, you know, we're walking along a path. I'm going to grab a flashlight and we're going to go, you know, step by step through the process. And we might not be able to see where the end is, mm-hmm. but the goal is to be able to at least see enough where we know what next steps to take. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, about how long does it take for the re? I know this is very quite a bit with the the women's experiences, but about how long does it take for that uh, confidence to start playing a part in her decision-making? Is that Mm, a hard question? question? (laughs) Um, I mean, there's so many different levels there. Well, so good question. Um, So I think it depends on which, um, of the offerings that we have that they may be plugged into. So, for example, I do a retreat five times a year, and it's simply a Friday evening and all day Saturday, and I do have people that fly in from other parts of the country for it, okay? But it's like yeah. a day and a half. Yeah. But it's intense. And I can I do an assessment, like, be, at the very beginning and then at the end to see how their confidence has shifted, and it will shift significantly in that time. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, so what? That's like, you know, 12 hours, right, mm-hmm. um, of in, of being, you know, out of your normal environment, focusing on that aspect of it. Um, yeah. <clears throat> if I'm doing one-on-one coaching and it's spread out, um, so we're not necessarily doing a 12-hour intensive, but it's spread out, I would say maybe, I mean, there's little things that they can start to do where we'll start to see some progress. I would say probably two two months maybe. Um, so in the grand scheme of things, it's not long. And, you know, I had a client who his husband makes a significant amount of income. She's been a stay-at-home mom uh, mm-hmm. with their four kids. And, mm-hmm. um, and he said something to the effect of, you know, you, you are going to rely on me for the finances and the knowledge and all that kind of stuff. And I had coached her to say, um, you know, I am smart and capable of being able to navigate through the financial aspect. I'm looking at, you know, acquiring the knowledge and getting the experience to make really good decisions. And I honestly don't think he knew what to say to that. Like it was, um, it was cool. So mm-hmm. there's little things that they can start to do that build their confidence and they take one little tiny step at a time. And, um, you know, and usually the average divorce process is about a year. Mm-hmm. So we'll, it'll ebb and flow. So we'll see a, a surge in confidence and then things will get kind of tricky. And then toward the end when, you know, usually somebody's trying to play games and really play hardball because they don't want to part with certain things. Yeah. Um, I see her confidence get shaken a little bit there. And then yeah. when it's over, then I see, we see another surge. So it ebbs and flows. Um, right. you know, and I think the other part of it too is, um, how much, you know, are they able to get some sleep? Because I think as, as simple as that sounds, <laughs> you know, that becomes yeah. a really important self care tool to give them the clarity, the rest. Um, the energy to deal with, you know, the most challenging thing they've ever been through. Right. Yeah. 
Um, for the weekend retreats, do you break up your people that go there as to where they are in the process or their knowledge, or is it just who appears was supposed to appear? How yeah, do you approach great question. that? Yeah, great question. Um, so I do believe that the people that are there are supposed to be there. And mm-hmm. I do keep everybody together because what happens is, and I've considered splitting it, but the nice thing is the women that are further along in the process become very encouraging to the people that are just starting. Right. And I think the people that are just starting remind the people at the middle, like, oh, my gosh, I'm glad I'm this far along. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Glad I'm not turning over when I'm, you know, just found out bad news or whatever. So, um, yeah, yeah, I do keep them together Mm -hmm. and have found that the um, genuine support that comes out of having people in different phases Mm -hmm. is really helpful. And so, yeah, I think the customization as far as meeting them where they're at really comes in um, in the one-on-one time that I'm able to spend with them. Right. I can see just from from my own journey that of working with women that being together in a t- intensive like that has to be the most powerful way to start this journey mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. you have all this support that's there yeah. and you can compare and you can say oh i'm not <laughs> stupid in this area i can learn yeah. and look what's happened to her i want to be where she is I really yep. think that's awesome. That's a wonderful. So if you're out there and you have a, a decision to make about your life, about divorce or not, mercy, what a great help this would be. Cause I see the finances being one of the major, major things a woman must take on. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It is. It is. And you know, we know that the top two things, right? When people are going through divorce, if they have kids, it's obvious for the kids and it's the, the financial stuff. Right. The problem is yeah. that they're not siloed. And so it's like, you know, a lot of times the, you know, the soon to be ex spouse suddenly now becomes super involved because he wants mm-hmm. more time because that means he has to pay less money. And it's just oh, like, yeah. so they're, you know, yeah. so they're not as separate sometimes as I think either people or even attorneys want to make it. Like I think sometimes they think, well, we'll just deal with the kids stuff first. And that sounds good. But yeah. we can't, you know, we can't not talk about the financial stuff during that time as well. Right. All right. Yeah. Well, what I like about and what I'm hearing is it's a great opportunity for the woman to slip out of that victim mode that she can get into mm. in this divorce mm-hmm. process and move into a confident woman, a more confident woman. I mean, that doesn't happen overnight particularly if you spent years with this man and that has become the nature of the marriage. Uh, but how awesome for that transformation to take place. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. I want my women yeah. to be, no, they're so strong. They can be. I know. So, I know they can, they, they can. And they they've can. got, you know, they've got, they've got the, the, potential and the opportunity to really come out of this thing even awesome. better yeah. than when, yeah. you know, they first started and yeah. they, they have more strength than they give themselves credit for. That's for sure. Yeah. Well, we are going to take a short break. And when we come back, I know you will be here because Rhonda is full of answers. And that's what you need when you're making this decision. Or if you're already in the process or finished the process, you may be needing to talk to Rhonda. So when we come back shortly, I want you to be here so you can take more of the good advice. Transformational coach, motivational speaker, and author Joyce Buford returns after this short break. Tokinet Radio has partnered with one of the largest travel booking engines in the world to offer savings of 15 to 30 percent or more on hotel booking fees through our own web portal www.bestradiotravel.com 
Discover the discount you can receive by going to bestradiotravel.com forward slash Joyce, J-O-Y-C-E, to see for yourself. This is a custom booking site for the listeners of my show through TogiNet Radio. We have negotiated special rates at over 650,000 hotels worldwide to save our customers money. Our members leverage our massive buying power to save thousands of dollars by booking with us. BestRadioTravel.com can beat the best prices offered by any other major travel booking website. Please go to BestRadioTravel.com forward slash Joyce, sign up, and enjoy the discounts. This is BestRadioTravel.com forward slash Joyce, J-O-I-C-E. Would you like to know how to bring more ease to all the decisions you need to make in life? Knowing your core values is the first step in Joyce's free live masterclass. You'll discover your top five core values in as little as 45 minutes. Join her now at freegiftfromjoyce.com. Welcome back to this segment of Second Win. Joyce Buford, the author of Effortless Happiness, continues in this segment to share insights that will help you live a life of greater purpose and filled with happiness. Now here's our host, author and coach, Joyce Buford. Welcome back. We are talking today with Rhonda Nordyke. And this woman has so many answers. She is really confident and knowledgeable in the area of financial wellness. <laughs> and when you are deciding about divorce, this is what you need, because that is one of the scariest parts about making the decision of, do I divorce, don't I divorce? What will my life look like? So I am so excited that she's with us today. So Rhonda, we've just finished going through the importance of of becoming more confident about the numbers and how you help women move through that that period in their life by this wonderful weekend that you have a retreat mm-hmm. that you do five times a year, which I think is awesome. But what are some of the other challenges that they have to overcome when they make the decision of, I'm assuming they've made the decision, they're going through the divorce, but, um, what are some of the other challenges they have? Yeah. So I think one of the biggest challenges is internal, which is the assumption. And we touched on this just a little bit, but the assumption that things are going to be amicable (laughs) because (laughs) What that does is it keeps them in a position where they don't seek knowledge, they don't seek information, they don't ask questions, and ultimately they stay in victim mode. Yes. So I think that that is probably one of the biggest challenges. And and you had alluded to it earlier, you know, and that is, hey, they want to believe in the best in, you know, their soon-to-be ex-spouse. They want to believe the best Mm -hmm. in you know, the last two decades that they spent together, right? And it's painful yes. to think of anything other than that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So they, yeah. so assuming that it's going to be amicable, I think is probably one of the biggest challenges. Um, mm. In addition to that, uh, another challenge that I see quite often is um, women um, with just not having – the knowledge and experience to be able to make those good decisions. And so it's acquiring the knowledge um, as well as taking small steps to be able to make really good decisions that will help ultimately build their confidence. Mm -hmm. One of the examples that I can give is we have a relationship with um, 
a car dealership here in Wisconsin, and it's the Boucher Automotive Group. And they've got um, – it's a relationship that I've been working on for quite some time because I see a lot of women that when it comes to purchasing vehicles, their husband took care of it. And now yeah. they're in a spot where they need to do that. And so mm-hmm. I wanted to create a different experience for women um, where – it's not just, hey, I show up at the dealership and I don't even know what questions to ask and nobody's advocating for me. And there's mm-hmm. a woman who is their, um, essentially their director of internet sales who had gone through divorce and had approached me about being part of what we're doing. And mm-hmm. she and I mapped out how we want this experience to look. And what happens is, you know, the, the dealership knows that this particular woman is coming. They're waiting for them. They sit down, they talk with them about their budget and what, you know, what they're looking for, what their concerns are related to, you know, purchasing a vehicle. Then they go and test drive some vehicles. And then the um, internet sales manager will actually sit down with the client and the Mm -hmm. finance manager and say, here's the budget, here's what we're looking for, you know, whatever, so that, you know, there's not this pressure or, you know, whatever to either upgrade or whatever. And so she ends up advocating for them. And then, you know, and then in this particular situation that I'm thinking about, they included a year, uh, an extra warranty and a year worth of oil changes, showed her how to connect everything. Mm -hmm. And we just got, you know, five paragraphs of a glowing testimonial. (laughs) The thing with that though is right. Like she, she needed somebody who would have the knowledge this, this gal has been in the industry for 20 years working with car dealerships, right? So she has the knowledge to help her, the experience, right? We can reframe and, and recreate this experience related to car buying. And ultimately, I know that this particular client, if you said to her, hey, would you go buy a car again? She would say, yeah, and you know what? I'm pretty confident that I could do it this time on my own. Mm-hmm. So it's yeah. the knowledge and the experience together that really helps women build that confidence. And so I just love seeing that because there's going to be a lot of those decisions, a lot of those decisions that women are now going to have to make on their own. And I always like to point out, you know, women are are very capable Mm. of making very good decisions when they have all the information, Mm -hmm. you know, And that's why this whole thing with being amicable is so challenging because I feel like it's a great way for their spouse to keep them at bay and say, hey, don't worry, everything's going to be fine. Don't Mm -hmm. ask too many questions because they know that with the right knowledge, the women are going to be smart enough to make good decisions, which ultimately means that they can't control them anymore. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) Yes. You know, yeah. So, right. so the knowledge piece is certainly a challenge, but not anything that can't be overcome. Um, and I would think the last, I think the last challenge is, I, I, I often say selecting the right attorney. I'm also going to say selecting the right process, because to get divorced, there's a lot of different processes, and, um. You know, you can have an attorney, you can have a mediator, you can have an attorney and a mediator, you can have collaborative process, you can have a traditional process. Like, it's almost overwhelming when you think about all of the options, and a lot of people don't even know that they have more than one option. Um, And so it's, you know, I never encourage anybody to do it without an attorney or representation in some form or fashion because... You know, it's kind of like, okay, would you go to the doctor and they tell you you have a broken arm and you're like, hey, don't worry about it. I'm going to cast it myself. I mean, Mm -hmm. we don't do that kind of stuff, right? You need an Mm -hmm. expert who can help you navigate through the system. Yeah. In whatever form or fashion that is. But selecting the right attorney, and by that I mean, um, I don't necessarily mean, hey, they've been, you know, the super lawyer for the 25th year in a row. Because... While that's important, it's it's not as important as, okay, how quickly will they return phone calls? If you leave um, them a message, yes. are, is it going to be a week or two before you hear back from them? Mm-hmm. Um, are they going to be the ones who are taking your calls or a- trying to answer your questions, or is it going to be their paralegal who you speak with most of the time? Yeah. Um, 
So there's a lot of things around making sure that you find the right attorney. And a, there was a there was a gal who had posted something on Facebook. And Joyce, this always just makes me cringe. But <laughs> so somebody posts, hey, I'm going through divorces. Are there any recommendations for attorneys? And, of course, everybody's got somebody to share, right? Like mm-hmm. there were probably 50 different names on there. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> my word. And yeah. I know a good portion of the attorneys that are on there. And I'm thinking – some of them, absolutely not. Like, mm-hmm. so I ended up sending her a message and said, listen, let's just grab coffee because, it, and you know what happened? As much as it sounded like it was everybody was trying to help, she was more yeah. confused and wow. actually didn't know which direction to go because now she's got 50 actions instead of a couple. Right. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So finding somebody who knows the inside scoop not just relying on, you know, hey, this person gave me a referral. Okay, well, have they worked with them? What was their experience? You know, mm-hmm. and, and we have a sheet that we give, a tool that we use to be able to say, okay, what are the 10 questions that women can ask to, when they're going to interview attorneys? Because mm-hmm. sometimes I'm able to be in those meetings virtually or in person, but not always. And so at least it gives them the questions that they want to make sure they ask. Um mm-hmm. And one of yeah. the big ones is how do you bill? Because they sometimes bill in 10 minute increments or 15 minute increments, but sometimes they bill in six, six minute increments. Oh, yeah. So that's yeah. a big deal. Like every little thing they do, bing, bing, bing. And, and yeah. people wonder why stuff adds up so quickly. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, uh, mm-hmm. one of the criteria I think I used was I asked some women that I really respected that had gone through divorce who they used um, because I did respect them and what their experience was with that person. So it's yeah. a, you know, there's, there are ways to get some good references through other people's experience, but I don't think I'd put it on Facebook. I mean, that's a one-on-one coffee stop with yeah. somebody. <laughs> yeah. Facebook is like, uh, <laughs> you get all sorts of answers. Oh my God. Yeah. It, was it is, it awful. is a very, it's a big decision who you work with. And I like those points about, will they respond to you? Will they take you seriously? How, mm-hmm. how, empathetic will they be with you because you're going through Mm -hmm. a really tough time. Um, Mm -hmm. I like those recommendations really to help the woman. I have to tell you a funny story on the car (laughs) buying. And I, matter of fact, I just ended up with buying the car. And although I'm never quite one of the things I had to sort of get over, I've always bought my cars because I worked independently before marrying and my husband never wanted to do it. So I was always the car buyer. And so, but I had to get over the, the, uh, fear that I might do it wrong. You know, mm-hmm. I might do it wrong. And so in my life, I think that's one of the things that you have to realize. So what if you do do it wrong? I mean, it's Mm -hmm. not the end of the world. I mean, yes, you're going to make mistakes, but next time you buy a car, you won't make that mistake. Mm -hmm. I had to buy tires for a car when I was a young professional. And I went to five different men because I thought men would know how to buy tires. They each gave me a different tire. (laughs) And I came to a quick conclusion they didn't know any more about tire buying than I did. <laughs> so I bought tires very confidently. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> so, you know, those are little things you learn along the way. So, you know, um, you, I usually go by price of what they think is the best, and I never go the best. I always go the medium. So they're just little tricks like that you, you end up doing. But so uh this those ideas that you gave were so powerful. I mean, uh you know, the knowledge thing is the scariest thing because we do think we might be taken advantage of and we could be if we don't mm-hmm. build our skills. So how wise of you to do that, suggest that for them. 
So what is a success story that you have with a client? Mm, yeah. That you're so proud of. That you really, uh, you know? So the one that comes to mind is there was a woman who came to me, and she was actually in the middle of divorce. Um, I got introduced to her through a mutual connection. Mm -hmm. And this was a gal whose husband had, or her, who owned a her husband owned a business. Mm -hmm. And she had a really, you know, a really great attorney in the sense that, I mean, he's known for taking on, you know, higher net worth clients. And he's, he's got a reputation for being very firm, I guess. Mm -hmm. So, but here's the thing. She came when she when I met with her. She goes, Rhonda, I just feel like this is still the old boys network. Nobody is listening to me. Oh, and, yes. yeah. And she had an adult special needs child and a daughter that was going to be graduating from high school. And so the long and short of it was, here was a woman who, you know, from all worldly standards, had. You know, I mean, she lived in a beautiful home. She had a great car. Her husband owned the business. You mm -hmm. know, she definitely had some challenges, you know, on the front end taking care of her daughter and navigating through all that stuff. But here right. was somebody who still felt like people weren't listening to her. So long story short, um, I felt like there were some specific things throughout the divorce process that they were not doing and they were not listening to her about. And we ended up pulling in an expert to be able to help actually value the business. Which mm. should have been just, you know, part of the standard protocol, but for whatever reason, it was not. And, um, she ended up, uh, they had given her an offer like, Hey, we'll give you X amount of dollars and then, you know, just call it even without yes. providing any documentation or actually finding the facts. And I'm like, absolutely not. Like we've got to get the facts to know what essentially would be half or fair or whatever, but how can we do that if we don't even know what the total amount is? Yes. So we pull in the expert. She hires the business valuation expert, and she walked away with about 120% more mm. than when I met her. Yeah. 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 I and, mean, where was her attorney? You know, <laughs> right. That was his attorney. Uh, what was he doing? It was so frustrating. So frustrating. Yeah. You know, yeah. I mean, I don't know exactly, but but his attitude was, well, I mean, it's not a bad offer. And I'm thinking, compared to what? <sighs> oh, my. You know? Oh, my goodness. So here's a gal. And I yeah. think the other thing that really stood out to me about this is I think a lot of times people think the paradigm challenge is that people think, oh, well, it's only the people that don't have a lot of money that really struggle with the divorce. And that's not true. I mean, here was a gal who you know, lived in a seven figure home, but she mm. wasn't any more confident and didn't have any more knowledge than anybody else. Oh and, no. You know, and so I have, I found myself really gravitating toward those women where, because everybody kept telling her, Oh, you'll be just fine. And it's <laughs> like, well, what does that, what does that mean though? Like just because you think she's got more than what you have, mm -hmm. then she's going to be fine. Mm -hmm. And so when we were able to map out her budget, yes, we did a budget and identify how much she could spend on her next house and all of those pieces, you know, she was a lot more confident because I took the time to just help her through this. I actually went yeah. over to her house to help her organize all of the financial documents so that she could walk into that meeting being uber empowered and they would ask her for something three times like oh do you have this didn't actually already like give that to you but okay boom she'd give it to him they'd ask her for something else she'd have it boom she'd give it to him it was like she was so empowered just from being organized yes I can, oh yes i can see mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. that's awesome yes great so that great was really cool her yeah and knowing you know knowing that you can have the opportunity to impact people on a small level, but uh -huh. on a big level too. I mean, when you, when somebody can walk away with multiple seven figures and it's a result of, you know, helping her advocate for herself, yeah. you realize the power behind asking the right questions. Yeah. Yeah. 
Now, I know that my listeners out there have heard so many <laughs> words of wisdom today, but you also offer some great things, some freebies, great freebies on mm-hmm. your website. So what mm-hmm. is your website and what do you offer your yeah. people there? Tell us about yeah. those. Absolutely. Um, so the website is www dot women's financial wellness center dot com the so women's mm-hmm. financial wellness center dot com and we have a host of different things um one is they can sign up for a weekly affirmation so they will every day for you know during the week so Monday through Friday they will get a tip or affirmation uh delivered directly to their email mm-hmm. in addition to that we have um an ebook called three pitfalls for navigating through divorce um, we have our podcast, so certainly that's free. So they can go to the podcast tab on my website and listen to a variety of different topics. Mm-hmm. And then lastly, I do offer a free 30-minute strategy session where we can hop on the call. And I can give them, you know, they will leave with at least one immediately applicable tip that they could use for their situation. Mm-hmm. Um, so those are some of the options that they will see as they go out to the website. So is there any concerns? I mean, I know the information is great for the the affirmations. That's really good in helping build their confidence and change their environment The and the pitfalls. But is there any worry that they need to have about uh, the 30-minute consultation? I mean, can they ask any question or, or must they be someplace in the divorce process or is there any restriction on them? Uh, good question. No. Um, so that is intended to be an opportunity for them to actually talk to somebody, me, uh-huh. right? Rather yeah. than going out and trying to Google all this stuff. And they're like, yeah. I don't even know where to start. I've got, you know, so I'll be able to give them some guidance or direction just from our 30 minute call. So if they're contemplating, if they're in the midst of it, just trying to make sense of all the pieces, if they're nearing the mm-hmm. end, if they've recently, you know, completed that process and now they're trying to figure out where to go next, um, mm-hmm. any of those types of situations would be a great way for them to hop on the call. Yeah. And if they wanted to do work with you, um, would they find out how to sign up for the uh, retreat? Is that on your on your website as well? It is, yep. Okay. So it's under the events tab and uh, they can check out, we've got, you know, webinars and retreats, all kinds of stuff. So they can pick, you know, what would be the best for them. Um, yeah. But, yeah, there's yeah. a lot of options. Well, all right. I'm thinking about that woman that in 2014 made the decision to mm-hmm. change her life. Mm. And I would like for you to tell me, looking back on that woman, what would you tell her? Mm. I have goosebumps. <laughs> I, I, I right there. Say, <laughs> what does that I mean have goosebumps. for you? Yeah. Um, and I've, I feel kind of emotional, actually, about this. Um, I would tell her that there are women that need to hear what you have to say. There are women that that are going to benefit from all the knowledge, all the challenges, all the opportunities throughout your life that you can bring to the table. And it's going to be worth risking um, popularity within what you are currently Mm -hmm. doing, navigating Mm -hmm. away from that traditional path, and um, forging a new path. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you're, uh, it's beautiful. The number of women that you have affected by this, um, it's, I mean, you, you were always been a woman that was helping other women. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But this is so, to help somebody that is suffering, yeah. I think is such a great gift. It is. It really yeah. is. And thank you for asking me that question because Wow. Yeah. It's a powerful question. And, <laughs> um, 
Yeah, I'm glad I'm glad I took that leap for sure. <laughs> Well, I know there are many, many women out there that are so glad you took that leap as well. <laughs> you know, <laughs> they're going, oh, thank mm, goodness for Rhonda. I know. She hey, a lot of times life. I get that question, right? Was well, where were you 20 years ago? I'm like, um, college. <laughs> How about that? I was in college 20 years ago. Um, I know. You know. I know. <laughs> And it's so interesting how when we start our lives, we don't have that vision. But mm-hmm. just like it was brought to you through uh, the transition of the work, it was so, it's so interesting to go back and look at these paths. And so yep. women that are listening uh, need to know that we don't always know our path. We just start moving. and. Okay. When it's ready, when it's time for us to know more, it's given to us. And not to let the fear hold you back. That's right. You know, don't let the fear hold you back. So if there's a woman out there that's trying to decide, she knows she's in a miserable spot right now, and she's trying to decide, how can I make this transition? Is this a wise move? Can I? Will I be making a mistake? Rhonda is who you need to call. You need to reach out to Rhonda and know that she's a powerful resource for you. And so, Rhonda, to get to you, they're going to go to www. Let me see. Women Financial Wellness Center dot com. And would they do forward slash Rhonda or just go to that website and then contact you through your um how to contact you. Yep. Is that right? So they can just go to the website. Yep. And there's a, there's a, there's either a contact us tab where they can send me an email or there's a book it tab where they can just book an appointment directly oh. for 30 minutes to chat. Yeah. 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 Well, I tell you what, this has just been so rewarding for me, as well as I know for my listeners. I mean, I'm, I'm always so thrilled to be exposed to people that are doing such good work as you are doing. So, you know, it's just been such a pleasure, Rhonda. Thank you. Likewise. Likewise. Yeah. Yeah. So as, um, what is one step that a woman can take today toward changing her life? I would say, um, Start believing in yourself. Yeah. Start believing in yourself. Right. Start today. Yeah. Start listening to things like her podcast. Continue. Thank you. Please continue with Second Wind. Um, It's exposing yourself to people that are willing, risk takers that have been out there, that have experienced the changes, and that can offer you success. Um, mm-hmm. offer you there are ways there are there there is new learning out there for you so that you can move forward with confidence mm-hmm. so anyway Rhonda I've loved this I'm getting so philosophical <laughs> just but I, <laughs> I just loved my time with you so mm-hmm. I thank okay. you very much for being here and talking with the Second Wind audiences. We've all benefited today. Thank you, Joy. Yeah. My pleasure. Yeah. So, as you go through your week, this week, I want you to reflect over some of the good words that you've heard here today. Finding your courage, having confidence that it will work out, that you are empowered With some effort, you can become even more empowered. Go to Rhonda. Reach out to those people that you feel are good advisors to you. And the other thing is don't be afraid you might make a mistake. That fear can keep you paralyzed within your life. And we want you to grow. So don't let fears that have been implanted in your little brain since you were seven years old be one of those things that keeps you from growing today. This is the day for you to step into your power. I thank you for being here. I look forward to seeing you next week. 
and may this be a powerful week for you. Thank you. Joyce Buford returns next week at the same time for another edition of Second Wind. Through the Joyce Buford Empowerment System, women are receiving the support they need through their transitions and are able to reclaim their true purpose with confidence. They receive the tools they need to map out new lives. You can find out more about her coaching services at JoyceBufordEmpowers.com.